Today we sample three of Goliad Brewing's beers with our creator, Stefan Zurichowski. This is okay. the Golden Ale. Golden Ale, very light body, uh, easy drinking beer. It's uh, made for the warm South Texas climate. Uh, a little bit of bread notes on body, a little bit of citrus on the finish from Cascade okay. Hops. It does smell very good. I get, I get the hops, Cascade. Yeah. We've uh, recently done a, an episode where we took some regular plain beer and hopped it just to get a better feel for what the different hops are. Yeah. We've never gone through and just tasted the different hops by themselves. Oh yeah, man. That, the yeah. home brewing, that was actually what we would do is uh, primary fermentation that split up into different carboys and do different dry hoppings yeah. just so yeah, we could exactly. see uh, different, different hops and what they would do. Then when we opened the bottles they all exploded but that's a different story <laughs> <laughs> oh my that's good i get where you said it was similar to a pilsner and it's got that cascade kick at the end yeah and, and just a little hop snap not a lot it's still it's 18 and a half ibus yeah. uh 5.2 percent alcohol so what is the methodology for calculating what the ibus are well there's a formula Okay. So in uh, things like how long it's in the boil and uh, the process uh, okay. or when you're utilizing hops, the utilization formula, uh, it's called isomerization, but that's the conversion of the alpha acids to okay. like bitterness units. So the longer it's in the boil, uh, the gravity of the work can affect it. There's a few other things, but basically that's it. The alpha acids, uh, the amount of hops you're adding, the, uh, the time in the boil and the gravity of the boil are the main things that would affect it. Okay. Uh, Cheers, man. Redfish IPA. Redfish IPA is, it's not a West Coast IPA and it's not a session IPA. It's still 6% alcohol, 55 IBUs. It's just meant to be a sessionable American okay. IPA. You're gonna have a good amount of caramel and bread notes on the body, uh, but they are definitely uh, over overcast by the uh, hops. But they definitely bring a lot more balance to the beer than maybe a lighter bodied IPA would. Okay. You should get uh, citrus and grapefruit notes, uh, maybe a little bit of pine. Okay. And the way that works with that caramel, it's almost like a spicy apricot. Okay, okay. and the redfish, the branding there comes from Texas is on the Gulf of Mexico. That's right, we're a in the coastal of, bend here. A lot of people don't think of Texas as being close to the ocean, but we actually are and people will go out into the Gulf of Mexico and fish for redfish, so. That's right, and even in the bays and stuff around here, we're about 45 minutes from good fishing uh, right here at the brewery and uh, really, I mean, about an hour away for some, just going all the way out to the ocean, okay. not just the bays. Okay, cool. And I do get grapefruit notes on the scent and a little hint of that piney IPA. Hey, you get a lot, a lot of that from the Chinook. Yeah. Uh, and there's Apollo and uh, Columbus and uh, super Galena. That's actually any floral notes and like it is also a little earthiness to it that comes from okay. the, the Super Galena. Okay. And it's not super, super poppy as much as a West Coast IPA would usually be. That's right, because there's a little more body on it, helps balance it. 55 IBUs is kind of a good air, middle of the road area right. for an IPA. Right. Uh, IPA. Uh, of course, we may at some point make a double IPA that definitely isn't in the same mold as this, but uh, in fact, that is the intention. But for the time being, this is meant to be a six pack worthy IPA. Okay, it is very good. You take it out on the boat with you, you'll at least catch six redfish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Black Hefeweizen, uh, this is a non-conforming beer. It doesn't conform to any style guidelines uh, because of the dark color and because of the okay. uh, roasted malts. But you should get banana and clove, uh, maybe a little bubblegum notes okay. with the okay. aromatics and the flavor. You should get a dark chocolate center with a little bit of roast on the finish. Okay. So the chocolate malts actually do affect it in terms of the flavor? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. It, it does make it uh, not your standard Hefe. Okay, excellent. And I do get a bit of that all on the scent. Oh my, that's very good. I get the strong bananas and yeah. Especially after the IPA. I should have roused the bottle, honestly. Mark always recommends rousing the yeast. Yeah, it definitely yeah. makes it stand out a little better. But if you look at it, it's, it's a dark, dark brown. Uh, almost like a brown port or something in the light. Yeah. It's not all the way black, but you know, I didn't want to call it dark, dark brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think black would better serve the marketing. Yeah. That is an excellent beer. Thank you very much. That 
it's just a uh, I don't know. When Mark and I get to thinking about beer, sometimes weird stuff comes out. So I think yeah. that is going to wrap up our episode of Beer Bros. Thank you very much for yes. hosting us at Goliad Thank Brewery you. in Goliad, Texas. And we will see you all next week on another episode of Beer Bros.